In 1979, the world of horror was introduced to a new villain, the Tall Man. A creepy old man who seemingly runs a funeral home, but is in actual fact the Tall Man. A sinister killer who compacts his villains to a small size and reanimates them into being his creepy minion slaves. His weapon of choice, a crone ball, which has the ability to fly around on their own to try and stop the Tall Man's victims in which these balls are armed with brutal weapons that'll no doubt make Pinhead jealous. The Tall Man is the movie boogeyman of the Phantasm film series. The first film came out in 1979 and it started a popular horror franchise that has now released five movies with the fifth one just coming out in 2016 giving fans of the franchise decades of terror and fear and balls in which actor Angus Scrim has brought to life one of the most celebrated horror movie villains ever. As thanks to his creepier than hell performances, fans just keep coming back and can't get enough of this film series. So today we are going to grab Phantasm by the Silver Balls as we look into 10 things that you may not know about Phantasm. Probably the only horror movie to have an ice cream van guy as one of its heroes. So sit tight and stay clear of the local graveyard as we step inside the terrifying world of Phantasm. Number 10, it started with a dream. Phantasm was the brainchild of writer, producer, director, Don Cuscarelli. And the idea first came to him in his teenage years after having a nightmare where he was endlessly being chased around corridors by a floating chrome sphere in which if the sphere caught him, it would have attached itself to his head and start to drill inside his brain. And if you think that sounds like a pretty fucked up dream, then let me remind you. Uh, actually, no, you're right. That's actually a pretty messed up dream. So, alas, as with several great horror movies, it started off as a nightmare, with the director then using the nightmare as a source of creative inspiration. Number nine, inspiration of the title. Without a doubt, Phantasm is a haunting and intriguing name. With a sense of mystery and danger, Cuscarelli got the title of his horror masterpiece from Edgar Allan Poe, who would often use the word Phantasm in many of his writings. The definition of Phantasm is an illusion, or an apparition, or a ghost. So the title seems fitting. However, in Australia, the movie was renamed to The Never Dead. In Italy, it was called Phantasmi, which means ghosts. And when the movie was released in Turkey, it had its name changed to Psycho. Well, I guess the tall man is a psycho, so I guess it kind of works. So, why not? Look, just please tell me that in Turkey, the movie Psycho isn't called Phantasm. Number 8. Story of the Minions The minions are like the tall man's mutant little slaves who do his bidding. Because, hey, I guess the guy from another dimension who runs a funeral home is going to need the slaves, right? We never really get a good look at the minions, apart from noticing that they are all small and seem to wear brown robes. Well, the actors who played the minions were in fact children. Yep, that's right. We've been getting scared over these demonic little monsters and the whole time they were probably just a bunch of kindergartners. Now knowing that the minions were played by children, when you watch the heroes attack the minions, it just looks kinda sad, like they're beating up a little kid in a Halloween costume or something. Number 7, Universal Takes Over. Uh 
the three main protagonists of Phantasm are brothers Michael and Jody, along with Reggie, the ice cream van musician. Um, okay. And the original movie was distributed by Embassy Pictures. However, due to how popular Phantasm was, along comes Universal Pictures in 1988 to continue with a sequel, armed with a shiny, glossy approach and a much larger budget. However, Universal didn't want to cast the original actor who played Michael from the first film, whose real name is Michael Baldwin. They kept Reggie Bannister, the ice cream van guy, but Baldwin had to go. Yeah, that's never a good sign when the ice cream man gets to stay, but you have to go for Phantasm 2. The part was recast by James Lee Gross, who is probably best known for playing one of the surfer bank robber dudes in the original Point Break. So naturally, Baldwin was pretty pissed off over the decision. He's gone on to call Phantasm 2 a terrible movie. But the plot thickens, as Baldwin would go on to reprise the role of Michael in Phantasm 3, 4 and 5. It's like they played musical actors or something. Number six, the tall man isn't really that tall. That's right, believe it or not, but the tall man, a guy whose name would imply imposing height, was actually a pretty short guy. In fact, the scene where the tall man confronts Jody, actor Angus Scrim had to stand on a box as the actor who played Jody, Bill Formby, was in fact much taller than him. In order to try and make Scrim look a lot more taller and imposing, he had to wear suits that were several sizes smaller than what he would normally wear, along with special boots to try and give him height, to make him look taller than his 6 feet and 4 inches. So... Technically, he should be called the medium height man when you think about it. Number five, the gargantuan original cut. The original cut of the movie clocked in at just over three hours, but writer and director, Cuscarelli, just thought that this cut would be way too long. Nah, no, you think? Seriously, I can't watch a movie in a cinema for over an hour and a half until my butt starts to hurt. I dread to think what over three hours sitting in a cinema would do to my behind. So the movie was wisely cut down to an hour and 29 minutes in order to make the movie reach a more reasonable time duration. So with over half of the movie cut, what exactly happened to the rest of the footage? Well, some of the footage was found during the 90s and was used for the fourth entry, Phantasm Oblivion, in 1998. Of which I kind of like the idea of not letting the old footage go to waste. However, not all the footage was found. Most of it got lost and hasn't been found since. So who knows, maybe someday someone will find the entire original lengthy cut of Phantasm. Number 4. X Marks the P Phantasm was originally going to be hit with an X rating when it was released, which no doubt would have limited its box office performance, all because of one moment, when after we see a guard get attacked and killed by the ball sphere, in which we see him pee afterwards. Because I guess in the land of movies, urine doesn't exist. Okay, I'll admit it, it is a little weird showing piss. I mean, we never saw Freddy or Jason's or Michael's victims go pee pee. But still, it's quite strange that that one shot of Wii was going to put the movie in X-rated territories. However, thing changed when respected LA Times critic Charles Champlin contacted the ratings classification board and urged them to reduce the X rating to an R. So thankfully, they took his advice and did. Number three, The Lost Phantasm Movie. Director and writer Roger Avery has worked on many great movies throughout his career, including Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Silent Hill, Killing Zoe, and The Rules of Attraction. And he was a massive fan of the Phantasm series, so much so that he wrote his own script for a Phantasm movie, titled Phantasm 1999 AD. And when he presented it to Cuscarelli, he liked it and got behind the project, and was up for directing it. But sadly, the cost got in the way of the movie getting into production. 
as the budget would have been about $10 million and no distributor was interested. So the project was shelved, never to see the light of day. Who knows, maybe someday someone would actually dig up that old script and make it. It would probably have to have its name changed and be called Phantasm 2199 or some shit. Number 2. Brad Pitt vs. The Tall Man As mentioned, when Universal took over for the Phantasm sequel, Phantasm 2, in 1988, for whatever reason, they really didn't like Michael Baldwin, so thus didn't want him to return. So when Cuscarelli had the task of recasting the character of Michael, one actor who auditioned and nearly got the role was that of a young Brad Pitt. At the time, Pitt would have been about 25, and he had some small acting up his sleeves, having appeared in TV shows such as Another World, Dallas and Growing Pains. However, clearly it wasn't enough to get him the role of Michael in Phantasm 2, and sadly we never got to see Pitt go face to face with the villainous tall man. So instead, Pitt starred in the TV movie To Die Young, and the Phantasm 2 production went with James Lee Gross. Number 1. Something Phantasm This Way Comes The movie Phantasm got made because Cuscarelli originally wanted to make a movie about a pre-existing story but couldn't get the rights. You see, it was while directing the movie Kenny and Co that Reggie Bannister, who played Reggie in the Phantasm, told Cuscarelli that he should adapt the classic horror novel Something Wicked This Way Comes into a modern horror movie. And Cuscarelli was intrigued by the idea. However, Cuscarelli quickly discovered that author Ray Bradbury sold the rights of Something Wicked This Way Comes to Disney. So undeterred, Cuscarelli decided to then make a horror movie, but make it his own original story instead. And so he directed Phantasm, which has become a cult classic and successful franchise, whereas Disney eventually made Something Wicked This Way Comes in 1983. And... Well, does anyone actually remember that movie? Sadly, given the fact that tall man actor Angus Scrim died not too long after the fifth Phantasm movie that was made in 2016, it's probably not very likely that we'll be seeing any more Phantasm movies. So let's take the time to celebrate the five Phantasm movies that we do have and continue to celebrate the haunting efforts of the tall man and his high-reaching efforts that he has made to terrify movie audiences. Anyway, I'm Minty, and when it comes to movie boogeymen, the tall man has the biggest balls. See ya.